Now we will be discussing in this module about the some common computer crimes that are there and because these are very common crimes it is um, required that the business managers are aware of this uh, cyber crime and um, so that they can take proper measures for it. So, when you are talking of cyber crime, cyber crime it consists of the abuse of electronic media, where computer can either be a target or a tool of the crime or even incidental to crime. So, here in this section, we will discuss some of the cyber crimes. One such often heard term is that of hacking. Hacking is the illegal intrusion of a computer system without the authorization of the owner or the user. Second type of crime is the spam. So, spam is flooding the computer of the victim. So, to affect the bandwidth whereby user is unable to access the data and work on the computer. Virus dissemination is malicious software that attaches itself to other softwares and destroys the programs and data on the victim's computer. So, Trojan horse, time bomb, rabbit etcetera are the common viruses. Software piracy, software theft through illegal copying of genuine programs for the purpose of selling and distribution. It causes a loss to the lawful owners and vendors of the software. Pornography, exploiting human sexuality to generate revenue. They also use deceptive marketing strategies such as mouse trapping. Publishing and transmitting of such material is illegal under IT Act 2000. Pedophilia similar to pornography, but involves children as object of sex. Internet relay chat, these social sites are used by criminals for their own ends and they can even stalk their victims by keeping track of them on the net. Very common of course, uh, very common here of course, is another crime which is that of the credit card theft. This may be done through hacking, keeping a surveillance device at the ATMs or any such devices as schemers. Net extortion where after getting the data, there is an illegal threat for a ransom. Phishing, which hacking and taking out confidential information such as from banks, then even supply counterfeited bank web pages, where gullible customers key in their 
financial details. Spoofing on computer on a network pretending to have the identity of another computer. It is a kind of impersonization in order to get access to other computers. Cyber defamation, after obtaining damaging information, the criminal disseminates the information to defame you and take revenge on you or cause loss, uh, threatening. So, just as in traditional crimes, threats are generally anonymous, hate mail is another form of harassment. Salami attack, after getting the required information, so the maybe the financial information from a bank, mm -hmm. the criminal may transfer a very insignificant mm, amount such as rupees 2 from other people's accounts into his account. But by transferring this amount from a large number of people accounts, he is transferring actually a very huge amount, but the victim who has been like maybe rupees 2 has been transformed from his account uh, transferred, he is not maybe very much uh, bothering about it. So, these type of crimes, these type of crimes may happen. So, cyber crimes in many ways, it shows the darker side of the um, community. So, um, it is um, where the um, criminals have Mm. Uh, switched to a new technique of doing a crime. What is most alarming for these type of crimes is however, the young generation and the educated have become much involved in this type of crimes, which is the very uh, like situation for anxiety for the civil society and the because the future appears to be really worrisome. So, this when you have discussed crimes with related to computers, these are something which is done intentionally and with the aspect to harm others. Now, we will describe uh, like the moral implications of intellectual property rights, because mm, uh, some people are aware of it, some people are not aware of it. So, what constitutes the intellectual property? What are the implications of it? What are the um, perspectives on intellectual property? These have to be discussed and what is its relevance in the business scenario and what it can be done to uh, protect the intellectual property. These are essential parts of this uh, discussion. So, when we are talking of uh, perspectives of intellectual property, it is the 
right which is relating to like literary artistic and scientific works performances of performing artists phonograms and broadcasts inventions in all fields of human endeavor scientific discoveries industrial designs trademarks service marks and commercial names and designations protection against um, unfair competitions and all other rights resulting from intellectual activity in the industrial scientific or the literary or artistic fields so the there are substantial ethical economic and legal issues concerning um, the um, issue of intellectual property right because the individual product initially may be is very costly to produce S but once it is done and then it becomes easy maybe to copy it if not it is well protected and then this the copied material will look as good as the original and then it can be used or misused without the if it is copied very easily then it becomes easily available also and in that sense the proper uh, the due the right that the original producer has for it in the terms of copyright that may it violated and he or she may not get the due worth for the uh, creation. So, the perspectives on the intellectual property rights are like the moral perspective, economic perspective and the legal perspective. So, the moral perspective perspective is that it is the inherent perspective of uh, inherent quality of a property is it is to be owned. So, um, like that we own our own name, our skills, our um, belongings that we all make for ourselves. So, like when you are writing a book it bears our authorship. So, if somebody could make money out of it, it is it adds to his own property. So, it is only that person who has right over it and no one else. So, he may give up that right freely, but it depends on his or her willingness. So, this is a moral point of view legal perspective tells like intellectual property right is an issue of right. The justice means that a right needs to be honored be it in the physical property or the intellectual property. So, then the ownership is legally bestowed on the particular person. So, it is the legal point of view. The business perspective point of view is the it is the question of IPR needs to be understood in terms of business. So, the words like trademarks, trade secrets and patents which have been developed 
by highly skilled people in uh, specially built environments. These have nothing against the morals or the law, so but they depend on them for their existence. So, the products of the intellectual skills can call for a very large or complex investment, because sometimes people dedicate their life to a particular um, research. So, when you are talking of the intellectual property rights, the intellectual property gives the competitive edge. It helps the in the survival of a particular organization. It helps in the creativity of a particular organization. So, maybe it is same as that of business. You cannot differentiate intellectual property and its protection of the rights from the doing a business in an effective way. So, this is the business view. Now, we will discuss about the implications of the intellectual property. So, a well majorly discussed case is that of Napster. Um, Napster, when he was just 18 years of age, he developed a program that enabled people to access MP3 music files from each other's computers. So, when he posted his program for a free download on the website by the same name, there were 30,000 people who took hold on it. it became enviable download of the week. A venture company offered dollar 15 million as a startup for the uh, new company Napster incorporated that has become well known both for its controversy and its earnings. The controversy was that for the mass copying, the companies lost business and the music artists were robbed of their earnings. There could be this case can be dealt both from arguments for preservation of intellectual rights and arguments against intellectual rights. So, the first we will discuss about the arguments for preservation of intellectual rights. The e ethical and the economic issue of this particular case is that, if the software copying is ethical and economically legal, the people in the knowledge business would be robbed of their property and their creative skills through which they earn their living. The authors will not get any loyalty, the <coughs> artists and musicians will not have any earnings and the businesses connected with all electronic programs and software will come to a standstill. So, eventually <coughs> everything will come to a standstill the technology, the governance, education, industry, business, because all are connected with each other as we discussed in the stakeholder theory. Mm. Those who argue against this tell like this is limited only to music 
and just as books are shared and lent among friends, so also such a software of music and images should not come under the purview of the case as in the case of copyrights, trade secrets and patents. So, however, this is countered by the weight of the sheer quantitative argument that the circulation of the book through lending by some of the friends is restricted to very few people. The software copying and that to direct downloading is of global proportions that will and uh, we try to hit the music industry. So, it will then once it will start with music, it will spread to other software based products which will eventually destroy itself. There are arguments against intellectual properties rights, intellectual rights like the company uh, Linux as its software of operating system for computers is freely available and is continuously upgraded. Mm. The people do not have to buy the operating system that can get outdated quickly. So, today many individuals and corporations use this software successfully. So, and And no one has seen like the businesses of Microsoft or Apple who come in the protected category of IPRs have come down. So, there are thousands of also other downloadable um, programs which are freely available on net. So, as a result it is may be shown like a free distribution has been a platform for a bigger and larger business to conduct business in the ever expanding internet market. So, where you face the threat, what is your capability to withstand the uh, threat and how you do things innovative to counter that, these are important, uh, these are important ways of dealing with the threat. So, when we are discussing about the um, intellectual property um, rights, one obvious things which comes to the discussion is that of the laws. And here we find laws there are n number of laws which are framed in India in the respect of um, IPR. It is the Copyright Act in 1957, the Patents Act in 1970, the Designs Act in 2000, Trademarks Act 1999, the Geographical Indications of Goods Act 99. Semiconductor Integrated Circuits Layout Design Act 2000, Protection of Plant Varieties and Farmers Rights Act uh, 2001. So, different ministries or departments have framed different laws to protect the intellectual properties. So, here we are going to discuss like the trade related aspects of intellectual property rights. So, the, ag the agreements regarding the trade related aspects of intellectual property rights has contributed to the consciousness and expansion of the issues. it obligates the 
uh, World Trade Organization to establish and enforce minimum levels of copyright, patent and trademark protection. Mm. The countries that do not comply uh, with these provisions are subject to WTO administered penalties and um, sanctions. So, before we understand like what are the preamble of um, the details of the trade related intellectual property rights. Let us understand the meaning of the few terms that we hear trademarks, trade secrets, copyrights and patents. Trademarks are a word name, uh, symbol or device which is used in trade with goods to indicate the source of the goods and to distinguish them from the goods of others. The trademarks do not expire after a certain length of time and the rights one has continue indefinitely. Trade secrets in the broad sense the term trade secret refers to all knowledge developed by a firm which it guards as it is a proprietor. Copyrights, these were instituted in order to protect written expression of ideas and patents. These cover interventions, machines processes or composition of matter. Patents give inventors protection for their innovation. Patents do not prohibit reverse engineering. The trade related intellectual property rights, the preamble is desiring to reduce distortions and impediments to international trade and taking into account the need to promote effective and adequate protection of intellectual property rights and to ensure that measures and procedures to enforce intellectual property rights do not themselves become barriers to legitimate trade. Recognizing to this end the need for new rules and disciplines concerning the applicability of the basic principles of GATT 1994 and of relevant international intellectual property agreements or conventions. The provision of adequate standards and principles concerning the availability, scope and use of trade related intellectual property rights. The provision of effective and appropriate means for the enforcement of trade related intellectual property rights taking into account differences in national legal systems. The provision of effective and expeditious procedures for the multilateral prevention and settlement of disputes between the government and transitional arrangements aiming at the fullest participation in the results of negotiation. Recognizing the need for 
a multilateral framework of principles, rules and disciplines dealing with international trade in counterfeit goods, recognizing that intellectual property right is a private right, recognizing the underlying public policy objectives of national systems for the protection of intellectual property, including development and technological objectives. Recognizing also the special needs of the least developed country members in respect of maximum flexibility in the domestic implementation of the laws and regulation in order to enable them to create a sound and viable technological base, emphasizing the importance of reducing tensions by reaching strengthened commitments to resolve disputes of trade related intellectual property issues through multilateral procedures, desiring to establish a mutually supportive relationship between the WTO and the World Intellectual Property Organization as well as other relevant international organizations. So, these are the um, some of the things which are mentioned in the preamble of the trade related intellectual uh, property rights. With this, we will move forward to the discussion of the moral imperatives of the intellectual properties and what are our moral imperatives for the intellectual property rights. Thank you.